Thank you, Sonny, for bringing us back on into the kicking and punching. And we've got some really good action going on in the future right now, the very, very near future, with a very good friend and compatriot in the martial arts. His name is John Daniels, and he, he hails from the state of Oregon. He lives in Dallas, Oregon. I'd like to welcome John, uh, JD, we call him, and you know, welcome home, uh, welcome him onto our show. And and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So there's a lot of questions to ask. You know? um, number one, guys, JD has been in the martial arts for a whole bunch of years and so much that he's done things also into stunt work and acting and so forth that I'm going to let this interview with him be sort of like free flow. I'm just going to just flow along with him and ask him all kinds of questions. And thank you very much for joining us, JD. Uh, we call you JD, or we can call you Grandmaster, or yes, or sir, or whatever. But you know, you've got all kinds of good names out there, so it's really great. So one of the first questions I'm going to have is just that: How old were you when you started your martial arts? I was uh, 12 years old. Is that it? 12 years old, and I'm 60. Gone. Well, I started at 12 and now I'm 61. So I actually started when I was 10 years old. My uh -huh. dad started me. Right. You know, when I first met you back in when I was living in Oregon, you were working at the um, university health system or something, right? University Science. Yeah, the university, OHSU. I worked there 30 years, uh, trauma assistant, pulled people off life flights turned them so the nurses and doctors could do procedures, restrained them, picked them up off the floor if they fell out of bed and helped turn the ones that are critically injured. Oh, and you did that for how long, 30 years? I did it 30 years. I retired about five to six years ago. And what are you doing in your retirement now? Well, I was lucky to travel with you to Kuwait to teach. Um, I still train in the martial arts under uh, Sifu Dan and Asano. I'm a full instructor under him. And I just keep teaching and doing privates. And whenever I get a gig to do a little stunt shot, I do it. Hmm. Do you have any stationary place that you're teaching or, you, or are you teaching online? Um, basically, I, I go to do privates and then I have a couple schools I go to. And I have a little small dojo here in Dallas. Uh, you're talking about Dallas, Oregon now, right? I'd like that. Yeah. Yeah, Dallas, Oregon. I go up to Portland, Oregon also to do privates. Mm -hmm. um, your son recently got married, but he's been training in the martial arts for how long? And what's your son's name? Uh, Tommy's been uh, Tommy Daniels. He has a school up in uh, Idaho that he's teaching at. And he's one of, I've ranked him up to fifth degree and he's also an apprentice instructor in Adam and Santo. And he's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's doing really good. Really proud of him. How we just children? got off working on a movie. Yeah. How What's many that? children do you have? I have close to 200. Children? All I'm over talking the world. about children. <laughs> oh, children. I got three sons. <laughs> and I got two grandchildren, so I'm a grandpa 2.0. I thought you said students. Sorry, dude. Uh, no, I have three sons, Tommy, Josh, and Brandon. Damn, if you had three, uh, 200 students, man, you must be really working hard nighttime. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, 200 kids. <laughs> Let me get close to you. <laughs> hey, hey, JD, is there anything that... Um, Right now, you got working on. Are you doing anything besides just teaching? Uh, I'm working on, a, on my book that's been in the works, and we're almost done with that. Basically, my life, because I'm half Native American. My mother was a Sioux Indian. And uh, when I got to meet the medicine man, he said I was walking the path of the warrior. He didn't really know who I was. But uh, yeah, just teaching, working on a book, and we're working on some more training videos, uh, Eddie Diaz in Texas. I'm supposed to be going up there to work on some more uh, DVDs for, like you said, we're trying to make it so that people can learn the martial art to defend themselves right now within three months instead of making it a 10 year to a lifelong achievement, make them learn to defend themselves now because of the recent 
things that are happening in the world. We're trying to make it, like you said, maximize the art. Fantastic. Hey guys, guys that are watching this here, don't forget to subscribe down as you can see the subscription. You can see the bell and the button and just put in your comments whether you know this is going to be helpful for you or not. We'd like to hear from you. Also, we'd like to say that this program, Beyond Kicking and Punching, is being sponsored also by the Kajikembo-IKA.com. It's an organization, the International Kajikembo Association. And also, you guys subscribe to my book. It's called Legacy. It's on, it's on Amazon.com. And we're going to be looking forward to John Daniel's book when he gets it out. And I'm going to be on his butt so to make sure that it is done. <laughs> okay, John, let me let me ask you another, another question. Yeah. You've had a lot of experience getting into the martial arts and also doing stunt work. What is the most memorable stunt work that you've done? Uh, getting to work on with uh, Dean Devlin. I worked on his shows, The Librarians and Leverage. Um, one of the big ones we did, I got was in a big firefight with Christian Kane. That was a lot of fun. I actually uh, slid on one knee shooting at Christian Kane and he shoots me as he slides by me. So it was, it was pretty memorable. Mm. And getting to train, you know, with Sifu Dan Sano who helped me, you know, to progress in the stunt work, to keep working on different things too. Big thing is if you can react to look like you've been hit, shot, punched. That's one of the big things. Mm -hmm. So do you enjoy doing stunt work and acting? Uh, I enjoy this. I enjoy acting, but stunts, you know, I'm going on 61. I don't like to fall down too much anymore. That really hurts. Especially when they do 11 takes, you got to fall down the stairs or get hit by a car. Oh, yeah. The things they make you do. It's okay after the first two takes, but after the 10th one, it's it, it, it's just like playing professional football. You, those guys get hurt really bad. We all do. So stunt work is just like full contact martial arts, like sparring with you back in the day. Give me a damn uh, neck ache. <laughs> um, I guess we've had a lot of good days together. Yeah, we enjoyed it. How long have you been in Oregon? Were you born and raised in Oregon? Yes, I was born and raised here. And I, I had a lot of good times, especially when you lived here. I got to go to your school. You always helped me teach the Philippine martial arts, which I really love. And you've always been, uh, uh, you know, I look up to you still to this day. You're really a great master and I love your philosophies. Thank you, thank, thank you. But you know, you, you, you've got some strong philosophy and inspiration also. Um, we've seen a lot of the students that you've taught that come up and have done something, especially your son, you know, is, who's doing really good. I am surprised though, that you moved to Dallas from Portland. Why moving to, to an isolated area, I think? Well, uh, because of all the rioting and all the things that were happening in Portland, uh, they pretty much wiped out the school. Uh, Hung Choi and the one where I taught at for over 20 years of school we had, we had to close it down because COVID-19 took it out. And now there's all these homeless people and a lot of uh, gang activity. And uh, some of the people that live by the school say they hear gunshots almost on a base, every night basis. I'm, I'm not just talking a couple of gunshots. We're talking over 150 rounds people have, the police have said on the, you don't hear it on the news, but it's happening here. It's really bad. So I decided to move out of there. Um, I still go up there to teach privates and special, but the schools closed down. So it was like, my sons all grew up and moved out of the, out of the state. So I'm kind of much decided to, to move with my girlfriend to a safer place. And uh, that's why I'm down here, but I'm still pushing on getting things going good. And I'm still looking on traveling. And I was supposed to go, before COVID hit, I was supposed to go to New Jersey, Texas, Seattle, and back. Right when I got back from Kuwait with you, and then everything went bad. 2019 was, I couldn't believe what happened after that. Yeah, it's been a rough couple of years for everyone. How have you been keeping yourself up? I mean, because there can be a lot of struggles, both spiritually and mentally and physically. How do you keep yourself going? What's your inspiration? Uh, I just have a dream. 
and a goal to always keep getting up in the morning and putting, having a good life. And you have my family and my friends and I just keep, I have a dream. I just can't, I can't quit. And I just want to keep promoting the arts. Like Sifu Dan always said, the only one that can make these things happen is you and God pushing you. So I've always been really blessed to have friends like you and other great masters that have helped you know, they give you a little pep talk and they just keep pushing myself because I want to be better, not better than anyone else. I want to just be better than myself to be the best I can be. Well, that's the only person you see twice a day, one in the morning in the mirror and that night before when you brush your teeth and you, you kind of get up in the morning and say, well, what am I going to be today? And when then at nighttime calm, he says, wasn't I, was I a good person or, or an, <laughs> or, or uh, you know what? Yeah. So I think you kind of look at yourself and yeah. reflect and, and, and to see what good you've done into the world. And you know, life is full of struggles and struggling is yeah. one way of begin, showing progress. And you've done a lot. I've seen you, you've had. What, have you had any kind of serious injuries doing the martial arts? Oh yeah, I've uh, tore up my knee. I've uh, fractured my back, my arm. I had to have my hip replaced because of some of the things I did over the years. I mean, man, I went from uh, karate, boxing, to jiu-jitsu, to Philippine martial arts, my love. And yeah, there's been some injuries, even on doing stunt work. Uh, I got concussions and, you know, things like that. You just got to overdo if you want to keep doing it. You know, that's the thing. Hmm. I don't plan on quitting. <laughs> no, no I, don't, I don't think so. You're... Um... I forgot, how old did you say you were now? I am 60 years old. I'll be 61 in September. So you retired early, yeah? Yeah, I did. I decided to get out. Ah, uh, but you're not retiring from martial arts. I think that's going to be part of you for the rest of your life, you know? Um, yeah, well, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Kakwe Kennedy said it. If you retire, you will die. So, and you said it, don't retire. Retire is the end. <laughs> that, that's exactly true if you had to write a eulogy about yourself what would you say about yourself uh, that I tried to be a good father and a good man all my life and like my my father always said I want to stay on the right side of the law I never want to go against it and just to be a good person and maybe I pray that the martial art that I've taught people Will remember me by that hey this guy was good and taught me how to defend myself and just to show everybody that i do appreciate good friends and family and i'm there to protect you if you need it i just want to be a good person so i can make it to heaven <laughs> everybody wants to go to heaven nobody wants to die <laughs> no <laughs> yeah <I> mean, <laughs> you know what would you planning or how do you where do you see yourself in five or ten years from now i like to i like to keep traveling doing seminars and help my son get a school going i mean he's working for somebody running a school but he needs to have his own school and i'd like to be a part of that and uh hopefully keep getting to go with you when you head over to germany or kuwait again or wherever mm -hmm. i appreciated you taking me with me. that was a very wonderful experience. I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting me be a part of that. That was awesome. Well, there's one, many more trips along the way, you know, as long as I'm active and I'm alive, you know, you're always in my heart and I, you know, you, you bring a lot to the table. So that's really great. You know, I only like to bring people that has quality. For me, it's going to be integrity, knowledge and accountability. So I can see it, have people of that, that caliber with us yet. In the, your growth, I know that there's been a lot of stumbling along the way, and martial arts play a lot, a lot into it, into defending yourself. Have you ever come across where you had to use your martial arts in a way that it was preventive instead of aggressive? Uh, there was quite a few times where I had to use it, and I was very uh, humbled that it actually worked. Uh, there was a time I was um, a bodyguard for a lady that was pretty well-to-do. Um, it was in a graveyard. It was during her mother's 
passing and a couple of her sons were pretty upset that they left all the money to the lady I was bodyguarding and they they came up they drove their truck right into the cemetery and they jumped out and started attacking the family and I'm trying to get them to stop and then after I pulled him off the last guy I thought well who's going to pull this guy off of me if he comes off on me so I told him after that you know it it, it went to me kicking him and knocking him back into his truck and he tried to pull a gun out and that's when uh, I got very lucky that I stopped him from trying to shoot everybody. And I was really surprised a lot of the old men that were there at the funeral that were out there on their lawn chairs uh, took the other brother out by hitting him over the head. It was kind of amazing, but uh, I never felt scared. But the only time I, I knew something was happening when I kicked that person and he flew back and hit his truck that was in the graveyard. I couldn't figure out why the other guys I was pulling him off were bleeding. And then when I kicked him and he flew back and hit his truck, he uh, had a buck knife that flew out of his hand. And I thought, oh crap, that dude almost stabbed me. And I didn't see it. But the kick I used, the front foot kick that I learned in Thai boxing, that guy flew pretty far back. He was a big boy and he hit that truck pretty hard. I think he dented it. <laughs> but well, I it worked. So is you're going to be writing a book. I'm, you'll probably be putting in all the incidents and how you defending yourself and what you use and so forth. It's going to be pretty exciting. I think that you got something there that you could also do your own documentary or even a, a small mini movie. Have you ever thought about that, doing a movie on it? Uh, I have because I'm half Native American. And my real mother, unfortunately, she didn't think having a white baby in her, she pretty much gave me up for adoption, but she came back into my life. And um, I, I got to know that I'm, a, I'm half Native American, I'm Sioux. I have my tribal numbers and I just, I, I, my beginnings, you know, I, I first started out with karate. <laughs> I was two years into karate, working at my fourth year, getting my brown belt, still in high school. And I got into a fight with a guy that had been only learning boxing for about six months. He pretty much whooped me. The only thing I did is I kicked him and knocked him back, but I learned I need to learn boxing. <laughs> so I, I kept going from there. Then years later, I ran into another situation um, where I got tackled down and this guy was not going to let me go. He was beating me pretty bad. And that's when my friend, he stopped the fight by hitting the guy over the head with a bottle. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, my friend was a my friend was a state wrestler and he goes, man, you need to learn to wrestle. And that's when I met Fabio Santos, who's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu expert. And that's where I got my blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to learn how to defend myself. And if it wasn't for him, I was teaching a seminar uh, years ago at Kelly Warden's and I was teaching some stick takedowns. And this guy raises his hand and says, hey, Mr. Daniels, I don't get this. So I went over there and this guy just tackles me down and starts crawling up on my chest. And I did what Fabio Santos taught me. I oomped him, I got him over and I, well, I made him scream for mercy to let <laughs> make me stop. <laughs> <clears throat> so then I learned boxing from Professor Trigg because I knew that I needed more than just karate. So I needed to learn boxing and I learned to learn wrestling. And I was under um, Dennis Sano learning the Philippine martial arts and Kakwe Kenyeti. And I just kept going and going and I still haven't stopped. And that's why I like hanging around you guys in the Kaji Kembo because you did all those things. You didn't have to go learn and, to box and all those other. You already had all those things in your, your skill set from Kaji Kembo. And your Juan Hop Kendo was pretty awesome because you moved like Bruce Lee. And I thought, I got to hang with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of keep moving to the next. But I think, like you said, it's like like what you said is salad. And you got to put everything in your salad and learn all the different martial arts to make you the best that you can be. Yeah, that's, that's true. You know, the Hawaiians also believe that not all one knowledge comes from one school. So this is many different schools that you can learn to to make you as a person, and that's good. Um, spiritually, where are you? Um, I Well, the thing is, is my, my parents that raised me, They my father was a Catholic Irish, and my mother was Christian. Mm -hmm. And my uh, Native American mother, Luan, Luasa is her name, they believed in the Great Spirit, and they called him grandfather. So I believe in the Christian faith. As long as you believe in God and Jesus, I think you're doing pretty good. That's what I believe. Great. So you walk in the path. That's very good. 
what kind of inspiration would you give a person that has fear and gone through the martial arts and is like he's done everything right in his life and came upon a part where everything is going downhill how would you inspire him whether you're using martial arts or any kind of religious or spiritual uh, things what how would you inspire a person that's that's on the verge of giving it all up like maybe committing suicide or something well i've had a lot of friends that have been on that and I actually lost some friends i actually found one after he committed suicide what has affected me from the bottom of my heart um i wish i would have pushed him more and trying to get help and talk as long as you talk to people that are positive and don't watch the news and all the things that'll get you negative um i believe that there is a christ and we have to keep praying stay positive by getting up to do one nice thing for somebody every day it'll come back to you i know that the end the way things feel now you got to get off the anxiety and the big thing is the tv don't don't let that control you make sure you just get out and enjoy life and know that it could end tomorrow and i just believe that if you pray to the creator to help you through this and to talk to friends and that's the biggest thing as i've seen is if you can talk to somebody and really try to help them and try to get them help because you're not alone everybody has somebody to help them you can make it and you just got to believe it it's just like that old song uh, the sun will shine tomorrow bet your bottom dollar i'm and sure that when you were working you know, yeah, i'm sure that when you were working at the hospital on trauma you probably had a lot of people that came inside there that attempted suicide also yes and it's uh it's pretty hard when you see one of your friends come across that came through the ICU that had committed suicide and i actually had quite a few friends that i worked with up there that committed suicide and they didn't have nobody to talk to and i think that's the big thing is friends have to reach out even if you if you're not doing good and you can see it in your friend ask him hey man are you okay can i help you and let him talk and don't try to talk why they're talking just let them go and mm. then try to help them and expire and give them inspiration that hey man it's a great day but it's raining outside we can go for a walk and do whatever we can do to get you happy and find out why you're so upset and just listen to them and try to help them that's what i wish i could have did with my good friend that passed but i just didn't know he had said some things and it didn't click till after he did it but god i could have just talk to him and took him to some of my friends that are very inspirational youth ministers I would have loved to talk to the talk to them so I believe that just try to be positive when you're around people and get off watching the news and all the propaganda that's out there cuz that's the worst thing that could happen then this is listening to the propaganda so you think that that's my belief yeah whether it's going to be social media or main media what's going on in the world right now you see that there is so much fake news going on so in your mind how do you how do you separate what is real or not real or or do you just take it out upon yourself to to just choose your subjects or choose whether you want to believe or not believe well the thing i believe is uh if you listen to that stuff over and over and over it does get you i get kind of in trouble with my girlfriend she hears it but I like to listen to the news and hear what's going on in Portland and I I try not to listen to it anymore and like I said if if something that bad's coming and they come knocking at my door then I know that that hey we're in big trouble but if you keep listening and getting scared and you can't hide from it these guys that's all they're doing is fake news and trying to scare the people and that isn't right it's it's uh I forget the saying that my mother's chief used to say but He just said that until the war comes to your land that's when you fight. Don't start looking at things that aren't happening. Especially when you look out your window and everything looks nice but on TV they're showing, "Oh my god, you got to you can't go to the store, you got to wear a mask, got to do this." Well, in America, you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear one. It's just like anything else. So I just try not to listen to all that fake news. It's too much propaganda and it's so bad for the soul. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. We did um so many things together. What do you think about your trip 
when we went to, to Kuwait. How do you how what do you what, what did you think about that? Well, I thought it was awesome. The the, the family of the Kajikembo family and the Ohana and the uh, Wanhop Kendo, and seeing the teachers from another country, and getting to them to wanting to see what we had to offer. And you were a big inspiration because when I watch you, I've seen all the other top. Uh, masters and grandmasters teach but when you did it it was like watching Bruce Lee and uh, Sifu Dan Asanto it was effortlessly what you did and I always write it down You, when you speak or when you're teaching it's like me being in class and I know and watching the people I watched them the Kuwaitis when all the other guys would teach and they were like oh yeah that's great but then when you got on they had their pens and paper out they were writing down what you were saying what you were doing And that's really inspired me to keep going because when you had me start teaching the, the Philippine martial arts to them and you kind of corrected me, you know, you got to really show them exactly the strike. And I said, oh, okay, yeah. And then once they started picking it up, I showed them the balance walk and just some of the stuff that you, you wanted me to teach and they really liked it. And you were really, you know, I, like I said, I'm not putting down any of their masters. It was great watching them. But it was watching you, and I know that was one of the main reasons they wanted to see you and your son, Mark. And they love all the other guys. They're all awesome martial artists, one of the best in the world. It was a really honor to get to meet them. And uh, thank you for letting me be a part of that. Oh, that's going to be fun. There's going to be more of that coming. You know, now that we are here to this point, I could be talking to you all day, and we could be talking about many things, you know, going to philosophical things technical things you know martial arts and all and you know we've got so many people that are listening to us and want to know more about who John Daniels really is not the martial artist the man himself if you were to explain to people who you are outside of the martial arts nothing to do with the martial arts who are you i was raised by a great family tom daniels who was a fire chief he retired a battalion chief my mother was uh, that raised me was an accountant and a housewife and i always wanted to be like my dad i i really i never got to meet my real dad but when tom was in there i became his son and i wanted to be a fireman but then i found out I'm afraid of heights. And that's what a lot of people laugh when I did the stunt work. A stunt man afraid of heights. I can't believe that. I'm like, I just don't, I get up, I get up even five feet up off the ground, got to fall back onto a crash mat. I'm shaking to my knees. And I just, I love doing stunt work. I love doing that. And I really wanted to be a fireman, but my dad said, you're going to go to work at OHSU because I had my cousin that was a nurse up there. And my other cousin worked in logistics, was a medical supply. So I started up there and I just, You know, besides martial arts and all that, that was my goal is to have a family. I wanted to have children and have a good a good life, you know, but sometimes it doesn't work out with your significant other. But my sons, they're the world to me, and I wanted to be a great dad like my father was to me. And that was my goal. Awesome. To be that kind of a man. Right. You know, we've had a lot of good talks together, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot more. And... I'm sure by the time that we end this one here, we're going to think, oh, I should have asked him that question. And you're going to say, oh, I should have said this thing. So we're going to be ending soon right now. What would you like to say right now on your last way out? Any, any kind of inspiration? I just want to say that. Yeah, I just think that people need to learn martial arts now. Like you said, we need to teach how to defend yourself right now because the way this world is, you know, I, I, the police been defunded, they're not going to make it to your house. And, and if you're going to use a gun, you need to learn how to use it. The, I think the worst thing is to learn a weapon or have a gun and never use it or train for it. And I think if you're going to be a great martial artist, you got to train hard for it. Like your son, Mark said, if you want to be an actor, you have a black belt martial art, but you have to go to school to learn to get a black belt in acting. It's the same thing with anything. Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you got to keep wrestling. You got to keep moving. One up can do. You got to keep kicking, punching, and sparring, and doing all the things, just like Philippine martial art. I just think you just got to give it your all. Wake up in the morning, even if you're tired. 
I hate getting up sometimes when it's so comfortable, but I know I got to get up and stretch out. Like Mark said, when we were in Kuwait, you need to stretch when you wake up and stretch when you go to bed. <laughs> well, I got the stretching before I, when I get up, but when I go to bed, I just, I, I'm still working on that one. Awesome. Hey, JD, it's been really wonderful talking to you and sharing things with you. And we're going to turn it over to our good friend on the other side here in Canada. Um, uh, to master uh, uh, Sonny, and Sonny got some good words to say. Sonny. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Sifu. As always, I love listening to all your, you know, questions and then the answers that we get from our special guests. And JD is, uh, how can I say, a brother from another mother because, you know, we've traveled <laughs> many Definitely. places and yes, even though he is the older brother, the younger brother always had to, always had his back and took care of him. And again, yes, yes I did. did. That's right. And yes, you did. You took care. And of I really love some of your stories and everything. And and it's very very inspiring to to know that anybody can learn if they really want to. And they should learn some martial art because you're right. We have to be our own bodyguards for ourselves and our loved ones. It's like what Sifu Al always tells us is that, you know, uh, martial art is like life insurance because when it comes down to it, you hope you never need it. But when you do, it's there just to be on the safe side. So again, I believe you should. Whether you train in one hop kendo, in stick fighting, in arnez, in in kajukemo, again, this is being sponsored by ika kajukemocom Also, remember that Sipal has his book Legacy on Amazon.com. So again, let's keep working at bettering ourselves and let's start learning not just for ourselves but for our loved ones whether you learn whatever martial arts please do so and again remember subscribe if you haven't done it also make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notified for every episode that comes up and hit the birthday again this is about learning from each other so if you get a chance to even give us some personal you know comments on how we can make this better please do so again thank you very much jd for being part of this podcast with me and sipuel sipuel final words yeah i want to just say this guys um really appreciate all of you joining us and we had a really good time but remember this you are the first responder anything that happens you want to say, okay, I'm going to call the police, but you know, it's going to take maybe a couple of minutes before they get there. So you are the real first responder. What are you going to be doing medical attention or doing self-defense? Don't rely too much on the police being there in two seconds or three seconds, but it's never going to happen. It's already known that they don't get there until maybe five to nine minutes later. And within that five to nine minutes later, a lot of things are going to happen. So you take responsibility to, for yourself. You are the first responder. Remember that. And all that said, guys, I want to thank uh, 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 Grandmaster John Daniels and Sonny and everybody that's joining us over here. And I want to say to you guys, thank you very much. Aloha. And we give yourself a good old clap. And we'll see you guys on the next Kicking and Punching. So, guys, aloha and goodbye. <laughs>